good. Okay, uh, blood coming back to the heart from the systemic circuit enters the right atrium. You can see the right atrium from the outside here, this little extra piece here on both atria is called the auricle. Now there's three entries into the right atrium. We have the superior vena cava coming in, the two brachiocephalic veins joined to form the superior vena cava. Coming in also from the lower part of the body below the diaphragm is the inferior vena cava. The superior vena cava brings blood back from above the diaphragm. Also the coronary sinus bring blood back this in through the heart. You can also see the SA node here, the fastest part of the heart, that sets the rate. And if it's destroyed then the heart slows down. Now there are um, electrical synapses here and special conducting tissues. Uh, the um, neurons here tend, uh, uh, pardon me, the muscles tend to depolarize spontaneously. They drift towards um, the threshold and they will spontaneously contract. The message spreads very fast through the atria. Uh, there's a delay though in spreading the message to the ventricles because there's insulation here, fibrous skeleton. We can only spread the message to the ventricle through the AV node where there's a little break in the fibrous skeleton. In the atria also there are what we call pectinate muscles, comb-like structures. Also in the left atrium, but, uh, I think more pronounced in the right. From the right atrium most of the blood directly goes into the ventricle, right ventricle. When the atria contract a little bit more of the blood, about 30% more go into the ventricles. It's going to go through the tricuspid valve here, also called right AV valve. We have chordae tendinae and papillary muscles that help prevent those, this valve from going inside out. In the right ventricle, you'll see muscular thickenings here called trabeculae carnii. From the right ventricle, we're going to leave and go through the pulmonary trunk. The pulmonary trunk is going to divide into the right and left pulmonary arteries. Now, the pulmonary arteries are, uh, and the pulmonary trunk, which is an artery, look more like veins. They're thin-walled and a very large lumen and that helps keep down resistance. We don't need to pump very far to, to get the blood to go from the right ventricle to the lungs and it's good to keep the pressure down otherwise you might get pulmonary uh, edema. The blood is going to go from the pulmonary trunk to pulmonary arteries to smaller and smaller arteries to the capillaries where they'll pick up oxygen and get rid of carbon dioxide. They will return to the heart as pulmonary veins which are now carrying oxygenated blood. These are the only postnatal uh, veins carrying oxygenated blood uh, uh, and the pulmonary arteries are the only postnatal um, arteries carrying deoxygenated blood. This is a posterior view of the left atrium. The blood will come in and go almost immediately to the left ventricle through the bicuspid valve, also called left AV valve, also called mitral valve because it looks like the bishop's hat. Again, we have papillary muscles and chordae tendinae. The trabeculae carnii are more pronounced here because the left side of the heart is usually larger because it has to pump against greater resistance to get the blood out to the tissues. From the left ventricle, we're going to go through the aortic semilunar valve. Uh, the semilunar valves do not have chordae tendinae and papillary muscles. They only fill sort of by the blood going backwards in the blood vessels and then that closes the, the three little cup-like uh, parts of the uh, semilunar valves. 